Today we're going to talk about Lincoln Riley's best recruiting pitch ever and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step milk. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time and today we're going to talk about Lincoln Riley's best recruiting pitch ever. Now he would on Good Morning Football on the NFL Network and was asked, well, I'm going to let Lance set this up and I'm going to let Lincoln follow through with that dunk. Give it a listen. We've got 60 seconds on the clock. Lincoln Riley, make your pitch as to why Nate Burleson should come and be the next great Oklahoma wide receiver. Well, we're not going to need 60 seconds. It's <laughs> <laughs> over already. Nate, have you watched the last two drafts? Hey! <laughs> hey, 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 what, what this, hey, what this going to say? Move on. It's over. It's over. It's, it's over. over. <laughs> oh, Lincoln. Oh, my gosh. It ain't going to take 60 seconds. I wasn't ready. And then he hit him over with the pow pow with the seven words of dynamite. Have you watched the last two drafts? And as Nate said, it's over. Bruh, if you are an offensive recruit, how do you look at Lincoln Riley and say, I don't know if this man can put me in the NFL. Oh, really? Back-to-back -back number one overall selections. Had the number 22 pick in this year's draft in a wide receiver that two years ago, people would have been like, he's too short. He's too slight a build. I don't care how fast he is. And now he is the first pick by the Baltimore Ravens in this draft and then you're talking about <laughs> then you're talking about hey Cody Ford he slid out of the first round and then was the 38th overall selection did take long for somebody to pick up Cody Ford that'd be the Buffalo Bills I would pay pay-per-view money to watch Ed Oliver and Cody Ford go through the Okie drill that would be awesome to me and now they're on the same team that's awesome and then sneaking in there in the third round the 97th overall selection Bobby Evans offensive tackle to Los Angeles now you're talking about the number one overall pick, the number 22 pick, 38th pick, 97th pick, all coming from Oklahoma. That's four, four Oklahoma Sooners drafted in the first three rounds of the NFL draft with at least two more that we know are going to get looked at, if not taken, in Drew Samia and Ben Powers, and then you throw Rodney Anderson into the mix. It's awesome. And I'm also looking at Lincoln Riley going, he knows exactly what to do with this. And this is a guy that we would normally would say he's recruiting on the level of Barry Switzer if he had the same number of national championship rings. So I don't really think we should be talking about Lincoln Riley in the same breath as we do the King until he's at least won at least one and then get to three titles. There's a reason why the King is the King. It's not just because he knew how to recruit. It's not just because he knows how to talk that noise. It's not just because he's probably the most beloved Oklahoma Sooner of all time. It's because he won three national championships as well. And I don't think that we can begin to talk about Lincoln like that until he gets there. But he's certainly on his way. You have back-to-back -back number one overall draft picks. Your offensive line coach is consistently called the best in the business. When people talk about getting college football players that play offensive line, they talk about Bill Biedenboe. When people talk about the offensive guru in football today, they talk about Lincoln Riley. Seriously, it's kind of embarrassing to be this good offensively at Oklahoma, and it's even more embarrassing when you think that they haven't won a national championship. And now you got to look at the entire landscape of what has occurred because LJ Collier went in the first round. He's from TCU. You know how many Texas players went in the first round of the draft? Nada. Zero. You know how many Oklahoma State players went in the first round of this year's NFL draft? Checks my notes. <laughs> Zero. I'm telling you, if you come to the Big 12 and you're not coming to Oklahoma, are you really going to be thinking about being a first-round pick? I don't think so. Don't think that's in the cards for you. You had a dude come out of Houston as a first-round draft pick. Before you had a dude come out of Texas, we're going to have to wait till next year to see if Texas can put somebody in the first round of the NFL draft. And all this talk about Texas being back. Yeah, back to the second, third, fourth rounds. Back in the butts. Back in the back in the contracts. What you going to what you going to Texas for? I okay, alright. I'm gonna I'm gonna get off Texas and I'm gonna get back into wow, was this ever a deep and second, third round? Because I mean we're talking about Cody Ford and I've talked about Bobby Evans. 
But the the value in the second and third round of this NFL draft is awesome. Now, maybe that's because I'm paying a little bit more attention to this one than I have in years past, but I'm also looking at it, and I see Byron Murphy was the first dude off the board in the second round. Really liked him coming out of Washington, and that secondary was legit. Taylor Rapp at safety, Byron Murphy at corner. One side of the entire Washington defense was a no-fly zone. And then Rocky Sin coming out of Temple, really loved him. Jawan Taylor, offensive tackle, really loved him. He's gone to Jacksonville, or uh, yeah, they ended up getting him. And then we're talking about Debo Samuel, who a lot of people like coming out of South Carolina. Greg Little, who blocked for Kyler Murray in high school. So the two dudes that were playing tackle for Kyler Murray in high school were drafted in the second and third round in the NFL draft. Take that for what it's worth. And then you got my man Cody Ford. And you keep going down here. Dalton Rasner coming out of Kansas State. They got Kansas here. That's wrong. Went to, De went to the Denver Broncos. Drew Locke. <sighs> Drew Locke. Going to be backing up Joe Flacco. So pour one out from a man's Brandon and all the Denver Broncos fans. I hope Drew ends up working out for you. I liked him when he came through to visit Oklahoma. Was thinking about playing football and basketball at the time. Ended up in Missouri. Hope it, everything works out with that dude. But, again, Drew Locke. And I keep going down. Greedy Williams to the Browns. Sneaky good for the Browns. All of a sudden, the Browns are not just everybody's favorite. They're the most attractive. I mean, you're looking at their secondary. You're looking at their offensive weapons. Greedy Williams going up against Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. My goodness. Denzel Ward going up against Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. Miles Garrett coming off the edge. Olivier Vernon coming off the edge. I, it's going to be filthy. The Browns is just stupid filthy. You keep going down. Ben Banigou out of TCU. So that's TCU with a first round and second round selection. So if you try to tell me that Gary Patterson can't develop his fifth talent, you flat out wrong. Keep going down this thing. J.J. Arcega Whiteside. A name so cool, I can't even screw it up. Going to Philadelphia. I like that a lot. Give J.J. some props. He's going to be out there with Zach Ertz in the game. He's going to be out there with Alshon Jeffrey in the game. They can get hype. Tristan Hill, defensive tackle. Now, I said we was going to riot if the Cowboys did take a safety at 58. And I'm kind of mad because Taylor Rapp was still on the board. But I can't get mad about no three technique, no one technique. Let's go. Boys Nation, let's go. Let's get this defense on and crack it. Taylor Rapp, told you, I love him going to L.A. Whew, it's going to make it real hard for Stephen Park to stick around out there. Andy Isabella to the Cardinals is also really sneaky good because you got a Bolitnikoff Award finalist that is going to be catching passes from Kyler as a rookie. So you got Andy Isabella and Christian Kirk on that offense, all of a sudden, the short, fast dude's going to be getting all the money and getting all the passes from your mans, Kyler Murray. It's gonna, it, I'm telling you, Andy Isabella, closest thing to Marquise Brown in this entire draft. I really like that pickup. Then you're talking about DK Metcalf, who got no wiggle, but apparently Seattle doesn't care because they made him their second-round selection. Good get for them. I mean, Jalen Hurd. Coming out playing wide receiver for the 49ers. Jalen Hurd opposite Marquise Goodwin with Gre with George Kittle in the middle. Catching passes for Jimmy Garoppolo. I like it. Man, Daryl Henderson to the Rams. Ty Gurley better watch his back. Draymond Jones to the Broncos. I really like that. David Montgomery, Iowa State to the Bears. Him and Tariq Cohen about to do that doggone thing. I like it. Jay Sternberg, King Fisher, Oklahoma. Stand up. Jimmy Graham, watch your back. He coming for you at Green Bay. I like it. Man, we keep going. Terry McLaurin. My goodness. The Redskins. I forgot to mention Paris Campbell went in the second round to the Indianapolis Colts. That's a really good get. Sneaky, sneaky good get for Andrew and the boys up there. David Long to L.A. Man, I love me some David Long in Michigan. That was that defense was stout. I'm so giddy because this second and third round was just amazing. I mean, Damian Harris going to New England. So they got a Georgia running back and an Alabama tailback back there now. And you keep going down. And you get the Miles Boykin to Baltimore. So now all of a sudden, you're going to have Miles Boykin on one side, Marquise Brown, and other Mark Andrews in the middle, catch pass from Lamar Jackson. Let's go. I told you about Bobby Evans. He's going to L.A. And you keep going. Will Greer to the Panthers. Also sneaky good pickup for them. Going to be a nice backup in the last years of Cam Newton. Prepare him for the next level. Prepare him for being pretty great down there at Carolina. I really love talking about the second, third, fourth, fifth round of the NFL draft. It's my favorite space to look for. Hidden gems, value. Start putting them away to fantasy football. Start putting them away for daily fantasy. We're probably going to talk about that as we get closer to football. Lincoln Riley's recruiting pitch, though. That's what I wanted to take away from this. Awesome, awesome, awesome day. All right, that's it for me. That was this.